Welcome everyone to the next in our little series of, of videos about permaculture and the practical application of permaculture on, here on Trevor Farm. With me today, the wonderful Steve Jones of Sector 39, and we're currently standing in a pile of poo. Lovely. This is what farming is all about, This really. is what farming is all about, absolutely. <laughs> with, with a couple of slight differences though, right? A couple yeah. of slight differences. So today we're going to be talking about the second permaculture principle, which is catch and store energy. Make hay when the sun shines. <laughs> so it's a key thing. And so this is the way I look at it, is we live on planet Earth, which is kind of like a closed system. The only new energy coming into the system is coming from the sun. And actually, so the, the primary strategy of nature is to somehow capture that solar energy and translate it into some stored form, which then can allow you know, the possibilities of growth and yields to form. So plants are pretty much the only thing, there's a few bacteria as well, but basically plants are the only thing that can take sunlight and turn it into sugars and carbohydrates and store it. And every other living organism needs to build a relationship to plants to be able to sustain itself. So one of the things that instantly we revealed is the natural world's all about relationships. It's all about these connections between things. Nothing can live in isolation because everything has to build a relationship to these plants. And, and interestingly, the, the plants can only generate sugar. Hmm. The actual uh, minerals and things that they need to, for their structure, they, they trade those sugars with soil microbes that bring them to them. So again, nature is typified by mutually beneficial relationships that help catch and store energy. That's, and that is the, that's similarly, that yeah. that's the principle, but in practice, um, where we come into it, we here as farmers and as, as consumers of, of, of food, of farm products, we're reliant on those, those gra the plants growing, and typically on Trevor Farm and many others, that's grass, to, grow, to, to feed ruminants, and then we eat. But then also... I was going to just say, because this is something you said before, and I think it's a clear, interesting point, is that... We live on quite poor rain-washed soils. And if we start plowing them up and trying to grow vegetables and stuff, is those soils are going to break down very quickly. It's not really, they're not really there for um, that kind of farming. No, we don't have a huge amount of topsoil here at Traveller Farm or, or in many places on, on, in the British Isles. Yeah. I mean, there are some large floodplain um, farms and, and they're very, very um, nutrient-dense and they've got huge depths of... Of, of topsoil, but not here. Yeah. So the way to grow food, to, to, uh, to capture that sunshine and, and turn it into usable nutrients and, and, um, uh, 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 and uh, uh, calories yeah. for people is to make use of animals. Yeah, so you, the grass is a most efficient translator of solar energy into a stored form which is then accessible to animals, and, and process it for us. To ruminants, to, to yeah. polygastric ruminants, so cows, um, uh, uh, sheep, right. um, uh, and horses. Mm. Um, uh, rather, and that's a way for us to, to be able to store those, those calories. Okay, love that word, polygastric. I, not, not one that I generally drop into conversations. I'm really appreciating the your use of it there. But here's an interesting thing that a lot of people don't realize, not a lot of people know this, is that cows can't really eat grass, in inverted commas. They can't really digest it. So what they do is they ferment it with yeast and bacteria. Mm -hmm. And then the, the, the cows are actually digesting the yeast and the bacteria. And then what comes out the other end is only really part digested grass. Hence what we stood on here. Absolutely. Now what comes out of the back end of a, of a cow is usually a little bit more sloppy than what we've got here. Yeah. This is the um has been mixed in with with wheat straw yeah um and which we use as a bedding to reduce the the odor um and to, to capture the the liquids so there's no nutrient runoff at all so all the nutrients are, as they come straight through the cow are captured here ready to be processed again by the pigs we'll introduce mm. the pigs in here in a few days time they will turn the the, um, the, the manure over to compost it and then that manure will go out onto the ground, but only when it's needed, rather than overloading a system and then that nutrients uh, being lost, being rain washed through and out into the water courses. Now, as we said, the real world's complicated. In permaculture, we're trying to create these models so we can help understand that and talk about it without getting lost in the complexity. Now, let's say that this, this straw that you're talking about is essentially carbon that's been extracted from the atmosphere by the plants, releases the oxygen, 
to converts the carbon into straw. What comes out of the back end of the cow? Nitrogen. Largely nitrogen. Largely nitrogen. So when you soak nitrogen into carbon, you get soil. You get soil. You get compost. So it's it's a, it's a perfect, yeah. perfectly balanced relationship. Although too much cows, too much nitrogen, and not enough carbon, then you get stink, then you get pollution, then you get all sorts of problems. And problems with algal blooms and waterways, and then all the associated costs of extracting those nutrients, those uh, the nitrates and, and um, uh, 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 phosphates out of the water, which makes it safe for us to use. Yeah. So um, in terms of catching and storing energy, one of your first then challenges then, obviously you're, you're, the, the cows are processing the solar energy into a usable form, but then that then, that energy's not gone away, it's now translated to something else. By soaking it up into this bedding, you've now put that into a form now. Into a stable form that we can yeah. then readminster back into a different area of the, of the, of the farm. Um, specifically, this material, material will go onto the, the vegetable field mm. um, to, to, to recycle those nutrients back into the food that then we can eat. But you get another, because this you already touched on it, but I'm just going to enlarge you yeah. on that. You said you, when you finish with this cow bedding, this heavily manured cow bedding, which I have to say does not smell. Doesn't smell at all. Um, because the nitrogen becomes absorbed to the carbon. It, it chemically combines. And then it's going to go over the other side and you're going to let the pigs root through it because they're going to pick out any... They will eat any, um, any um, uh, 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 pests and worms and bugs and, and microbes and they'll, they'll aerate the, um, the compost and, so, and they'll turn it over and they'll, to increase the, the digestion mm. or the, the, the process of the compost. So it'll reduce down in volume, but it'll increase in, in what's left will be highly nutritious. The pigs will have a great time doing it because they'll be um, exercising their, they natural, natural. their natural behaviours. Yeah, yeah. So they'll be happy pigs. And we get a really high quality, safe product that we can then put back onto the ground. Brilliant. So you're, you're, you're catching and storing the behaviour of the pig to build your compost. Mark. And with that, <laughs> as the Kyoto arrives, we'll sign off for another time. We'll go. see you soon. Cheers.